a very exciting game. Robson went for 1e4 and Wolf went for e6, the French defense. This is the first small surprise. Normally he plays the Sicilian in most recent games I've seen at least. But the World Cup has its own rules because players know the pairings like a month in advance. So there is plenty of time to prepare and there is a lot of money to be made if you make it past a couple rounds. So guys go to quite some extent to surprise their opponents and I don't, I don't know, but Wolf might have prepared this opening, especially for Ray Robson. Goes for e4, e6. Robson goes for the main line, d4, d5, knight c3. And black plays knight to f6. The alternative is the very sharp Vinaver with bishop b4, e5, which leads to a slightly different play. Knight f6 is a more positional move, while bishop b4 can lead to extremely sharp play. And after knight f6, e5 is played, we get a very typical French structure with knight fd7. So e5, white has some other options, bishop g5, but recently e5 has been more popular, mainly I guess because after bishop g5, black has a white choice between d takes e4, bishop to b4, and bishop e7, which leads to sort of similar play, like as in the game anyway, so probably white does not want to give black that choice, and nowadays a lot of guys prefer the move e5. Knight fd7, f4, this is the main line, c5, knight to f3, knight to c6, and bishop to e3. And we already see the structure that will dominate the rest of the game. The themes here are a few. One big topic is always the bad bishop on c8. Black has to be careful that if he exchanges too many pieces, he might end up with his bad bishop on c8, which is hard to exchange, against a good white knight on f3 or c3. And that's a lesson we often learn that one should not allow that to happen because this bishop is block locked in by its pawn chain and it can become quite a problem for black. However, there's a lot more topics in this position. For example, normally white is going to castle queenside and black is going to castle kingside. So it's quite us usual in this line that we see pawn storms on opposite sides of the board Black typically will go a6, b5 at some point, and white will try to attack the black king on g8, either by f5 or by pushing his h and g pawn up the board. So it's a very rich position with many different plans and a lot of theory. Black already here has a huge choice after bishop e3, bishop e7 is played quite often with the idea of d takes c5, knight takes c5, and sometimes even following up with b6 to discourage white from taking on c5. A6 is a very common move, intending to play B5 as soon as possible. Some sharp lines around Queen to B6 as well. So it's a massive mainline theory position. And Wolf goes for one of those main lines. He plays C takes D4, Knight takes D4, Bishop to C5. Arguably the most sensible way to develop, just releasing the tension in the center, pulling the Bishop here, castling Kingside, and then intending to follow up with A6, B5. Of course, one drawback is that some exchanges on d4 are looming, which would get us closer to this bad bishop, good knight scenario, and black should try to avoid that. Queen d2 is the main line, short castles, long castles. a6, still the main line, preparing to go b5, normally after some exchange on d4, of course, because at the moment c6 will be on priest. Here, we're still very much in theory land. White has a choice. The move they most often play is a move h4, intending to go h5, h6 to create some weaknesses around the black king, but also to include the rook into the game, to go rook h3. And often this rook can find very useful work along the third rank. A lot of theory here, I'm not gonna go into too much detail. Knight takes, bishop takes, b5, rook h3, b4, and the game only just begun. There are alternatives, queen f2 is another move. Slightly more positional, threatening knight takes c6, encouraging black to take on d4. And after bishop takes on b5, once again, we have a very complicated game where black is trying to attack on the queen side, while white is trying to use his long-term positional trumps and his space advantage. Robson chooses a third move that is not so well known, but since this line is so well known, if I say no, not so well known, it means there's still more than 300 games with this move. He goes knight to b3. Very desirable strategically to exchange these dark square bishops, but knight b3 does have its drawbacks to it, withdraws the knight from the center and black is not forced to exchange bishops. 
Black plays bishop b4 here, which is a very strong move and also the main line of theory, provoking white to go a3. Because after a3, this bishop would just retreat to e7. But turns out that this pawn on a3 has seriously weakened the white king's position and black now has quite a hook to start his queenside attack with b5, b4. So a3 is not to be recommended. So that Robson plays the main move, bishop d3, logical development, keeping an eye on h7 already. Black goes b5, one of the drawbacks, as I mentioned, of knight b3, that now black can do this without exchanges. And in this position, Robson plays a move I do not like very much. He goes knight back to d4, but this somehow can't be right. You go knight b3 to exchange bishops, then this bishop goes away, and then two, three moves later, you put the knight back on d4 after black played b5, so now he can go bishop b7. It doesn't feel right. It's desirable strategically to exchange pieces, but it is a little bit too slow. The move that is played more often, I'm not going to claim I'm an expert of the French defense, I've never played this line in my life, but I've looked at some games. What they play more often is the move g4 here, tending to bring the rook to g3 and then to h3 to target the soft spot in black's camp, the h7 pawn. Play can become very sharp, for example, g4, bishop b7, rook g1, rook c8, rook to g3. And black already has to be a bit careful. For example, if you played knight b6, which looks logical at first sight, intending to jump to c4, then black is already in big trouble. Rook h3, attacking here, g6, bishop takes, queen takes, and f5, and all of a sudden white is winning, threatening queen h6, and the attack crashes through. Of course, this is not forced, and black has alternatives after rook g3, for example, g6 is a move, bishop takes c3 is a move, rook e8 is a move. Would have led to very sharp play, but I think if you go for knight b3, you should go for one of these lines. Instead, after knight d4 is played in the game, bishop b7, black for now has solved his opening problems, but the position does remain very sharp. Black still has to attack on the queen side, and white has to make something happen on the king side. But Robson is more concerned with stabilizing play in the center first, he exchanges on c6, goes bishop to d4, which strategically makes a lot of sense, he's overprotecting this knight on c3 so he can remove the queen, he's blocking black from going d5, d4, activating his bishop, but it is all a little slow, and I don't know this, but it could be that he was surprised by the opening choice of his opponent, he normally doesn't play the French, therefore hadn't prepared for it and had to improvise a bit here, and it didn't turn out too well. <clears throat> well, of course, knight c5, very logical move, intending to exchange on d3. This, once again, is a little double-edged because every exchange brings you closer to this bad bishop, good knight scenario, but the pros outweigh the cons here. You get rid of the dangerous good white bishop on d3, you do secure the bishop pair, and since black is short on space, he also gains some more maneuvering space by getting rid of a pair of pieces. White has to go along with the exchange, bishop e2, knight e4, does not look very tempting. And queen f2 is played by Robson, forcing black's hand. Knight takes d3, rook takes d3. c takes d is sometimes an option, but here with the king on c1 to expose, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Rook c8, king b1, let's say bishop e7 back, followed by b4, and black is very comfortable. So rook takes d3 is stronger, and bishop back to e7 is a move I quite like. Freeing the way once again for this b pawn to go b4, maybe activate the bishop with bishop b5, maybe go rook c8, make something happen on the a file, on the c file, sorry, or push the a pawn as well and start a pawn storm. Black keeps his options open and he, yeah, is profiting from the fact that the white attack on the king side has not progressed a lot yet. The move that would make sense strategically is the move bishop to c5. But here it turns out that black is just very fast, and after b4, bishop e7, queen e7, this bad bishop is not really so bad. It's going to go to c5, to b5, black is very active, while white hasn't progressed much, so not a good idea. Instead, Robson decides to regroup his knight, goes knight to d1, planning to put the knight on e3, and then to go f5. b4 is played anyway, this is needed in order to activate the bishop later on. Rook to h3, before he goes knight e3, he wants to include the rook into the attack. But it is all a little slow and based on peace play only. So yeah, I'm skeptical about Robson's opening play here. Rook to c8, knight to e3. 
Once again, the white setup is very harmonious, but there are dynamic factors and black is just faster on the queen side so far. However, this is a key position after knight e3. Now white is getting ready to play f5. He protected the c2 pawn with his knight from e3. And if black played, let's say, a5, white will go f5. And all of a sudden the position becomes very, very unclear. After e takes f5, knight takes f5. Now the white pieces make a lot of sense. This bishop and the knight there eyeing g7. It's already themes like knight takes g7 and e6 in the air. Knight takes e7 is sometimes an option followed by bishop c5. So this position would be very unclear. Bishop d7 is what black would have to do and not what black wants. Instead, black plays a much stronger move, the move f5. This is another mark of a good French player and one topic that would confuse me. When is f5 or f6 a good move and when is it weakening the king side? Here it turns out to be very strong, just stopping white from going f5. And if white were to take this, once again, he would get his strategically desirable exchange of bishops, but he is too slow. f4 is under attack. You can't defend it comfortably with g3 because then this bad bishop becomes pretty strong and the position favors black. Instead, Ray Robson tries to open the position on the king side by going g4. Very logical move as well, trying to create some play here. But once again, Vovk is up to the task, takes on g4, knight takes and plays one of the star moves of the game, which will not come as a surprise to French players. He puts this bad bishop to very good work, goes bishop e8, and if this bishop arrives to g6, all of a sudden it's a monster. It's targeting the weak spot in white's camp, the c2 pawn, and protects his own weak spot on h7, which is really all you can ask from a bishop. So this storyline about good bishops and bad bishops, it's not always that easy. And here, yeah, after bishop e8, black, white is in trouble because bishop g6 is coming. He has to come up with something, and Ray Robson does. He go, comes with a peace sacrifice, knight f6 check. If black were to accept this, gf, it's actually a quiet peace offer, because white has a forced line here, and he doesn't have any alternatives. That leads to a draw. Bishop g6, rook h7, king h7, queen h4, king g7, rook g6, king g6, queen g4, king f7, queen h5, with a perpetual no escaping. Check it out yourself. So black could have gone for the draw here with gf6, but he rightly judged that he can play for more, because bishop takes f6, e takes f6, and the bishop lands on its final destination. Not sure if that's true, but on its destination on g6. And we have a new chapter of the game with opposite colored bishops. Both of these bishops are pretty active, pretty strong. White starts with f takes g7, now rook c2 would be a little hasty because after all these exchanges it turns out that white is up material he would be up a, he would have two rooks and a bishop for the i'm sorry did i just blunder no it's it's correct two rooks and a bishop for the black queen which is too much so you can't do that but black just goes rook to f7 turns out this bishop is doing a very good job defending the Kingside for now, long term it's dangerous because should a white rook ever get to the 8th rank, this pawn would be quite a powerhouse, but short term the initiative is with black, who's threatening rook, takes c rook to c7 and rook takes c2. And Ray Robson rightly judges that rook to c7 is the bigger threat, he stops it by going bishop e5, and he's prepared to sacrifice his queen after rook c2, queen c2, bishop c2, king c2, the computer gives black a bit of an edge, but to my mind this position is not clear at all, probably equal, because white has this very sound construction with a protected bishop on e5 and the pawn on g7. If a rook ever magically gets to the 8th rank, black is in trouble, so I'm not at all sure black is even better here. The white king is more or less safe after king b1, so this, yeah, looked good, but it's not that lethal yet. Instead, Wolf comes up with a move that has been called the move of the day, at the very least, it's a very spectacular move. I'll give you guys three seconds to come up with it, which is probably going to be tough, but we got to keep the video going. It's over length already. It's a quiet queen move, but it's not that quiet, really, because it lands on a square that white is covered. Queen to g5. This move is of devastating strength. First of all, f takes g5 allows black to activate his other rook. After rook f2, he's just winning. Rook to c2, 
can't be stopped really if c3 the most precise is something like rook e2 show f6 check rook takes b2 and there's too many threats black is winning here so this queen cannot be captured but it's also threatening things for example if white were to go rook to e1 to stop queen takes e5 then queen f5 would decide the game immediately with a double attack against the h3 rook and the c2 pawn nothing white can do can't do that instead robson plays the most resilient move here the move rook to e3 and the idea is if now rook queen f5 then there's nothing to attack on h3 white will go rook e2 cover his achilles heel achilles heel on c2 and would even be slightly better because his bishop is still in place but no such luck after rook e3. Bovk is not at all worried about removing his queen from g5. He just plays bishop takes c2. Quiet move, but devastatingly strong. Well, it's not that quiet, really, but he keeps ignoring his queen on g5. And it is very, very strong. Now, queen takes c2. This queen sacrifice no longer works because at the end of the line, black picks up the rook on h1 with check winning. Can't do that. And various bishop retreats are massive threats so white has to send king on a walk go king d2 and at the risk of repeating myself Wolf still doesn't move his queen from g5 and worry about nothing retreats his bishop not a very strong move bishop g6 threatening rook c2 check and only later if needed he will put his queen to f5 but for now he just leaves it on priest for a while no problem Rook to c1, only move to stop the black threat of rook c2. Rook takes c1, king takes c1, and finally he decides, okay, maybe it's time to activate this queen. Moving from g5, goes queen f5, carrying, once again, very strong threats with queen b1. And the white defenses just aren't stable enough. Black has managed to keep the initiative throughout. White never got a breather to try to bring his rook over. Plays the most... Yeah, the best move, queen to e2, but it's not, not good enough because Wolf once again comes up with a serious blow. Queen b1 check wouldn't lead to anything too tangible yet here. The white king just escapes to safer postures, greener postures on f2. But instead, black plays a very strong move, d4 adding a new element to the position and the main point is the pawn can't be captured because then rook c7 this rook joins the attack with devastating effect instead white has to move his rook he went to b3 it's not that many good squares maybe to g3 would have been slightly better but would not really have changed the outcome because after queen b1 checking d2 strangely queen takes a2 seems to be best but queen takes b2 is also pretty strong blackwood still stay in the driver's seat at the very least so you play rook b3 intending to capture on b4 and finally make it to b8 and also to cover the b2 pawn but it is coming too late queen b1 check king d2 queen c2 check king e1 now it looks like this king is about to escape but black has a new trump which he uses to great effect he goes d3 and it turns out that the ending does not offer white a lot of relief because this pawn is queening king d2 rook d7 so the white queen has to go somewhere else first move that comes to mind is queen to d2 but that is very strongly met by queen to c5 tending to give a check on g1 intending to give a mate actually and there is absolutely no defense to that check for yourself if king at one for example queen takes e5 using this pin and it's game that's why queen d2 didn't help instead ray robson tried queen to d1 trying to keep this square for his king should it be needed but that has more drawbacks black following tomorrow invite everyone to the party finally makes use of his rook goes rook d7 to support this d pawn and the d pawn cannot be stopped once again queen d2 queen c5 loses instead ray robson tried rook takes b4 which contains one last trap but it was not meant to be the last trap is d2 check king e2 if black gets greedy here and goes bishop d3 check king to e3 queen takes d1 he did win the queen but turns out he can resign after rook b8 check because next move is g8 check queen and then queen g7 checkmate so 
It's never too late to spoil a great game and a winning position, but no such luck for Ray Robson this time. Black just played queen takes d1 check, and it turns out that after king takes d1, bishop h5 check, king c2, black queens would check, avoiding any rook b8 unpleasantness, and the extra queen would check, will decide. King c3, queen d3 checkmate. Therefore, Ray Robson had seen enough after queen takes d1 check and resigned here. Very good game by Black, that's all I can say. First of all, I think it's instructive, all this stuff about maneuvering with the bad bishop here. I was talking about the bad bishop, but look at the career this guy made when it went from to e8 and then to g6 and it became the strongest piece on the board and decided the game later on along this diagonal. And then, of course, it did include the star move, the move queen to g5, which received